Good afternoon. Please remain standing for the national anthem, and I direct your attention to the flag of the United States of America. Welcome graduates, friends, and family to the 2021 Recognition and Commencement Ceremony for the Physical Therapist Assistants and Paramedic Programs. My name is Laura Schwanebeck, and I am the Director of the PTA Program. I am joined by Carol Rodenberg, the Director of the Paramedic and EMS Programs, and we are honored to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of the graduates sitting before us. To begin today's celebration, please help me welcome to the podium Dr. Leah Barrett, President of Northeast Community College, to provide a welcome and share a few words. Good afternoon. You know, I have to tell you this when we come into the song, it's called Pomp and Circumstance. I just can't help smiling, and I know we're behind these masks, but I hope you feel the warmth um, coming from this wonderful stage of faculty and instructors that have been working with our graduates so well over the past year and year and a half. So I want to welcome you to Northeast Community College's Physical Therapy Assistant and Paramedic Program Recognition and Degree confer Conferral Ceremony. It's such a pleasure to be with you and your families and friends for this momentous occasion. As we have lived through this worldwide pandemic, we have found opportunities to improve so many of our programs, our services, and our recognition programs. And today, this ceremony is one of those accomplishments. We are just pleased to have both our physical therapy assistant and paramedic students together to celebrate their accomplishments and for us to confer their degrees. To the graduates of the class of 2021, let me offer you heartfelt congratulations on these achievements. Graduates, you have a story to tell. You are leaving Northeast with the most unique higher education experience of a generation. You have mastered the content knowledge provided by our incredible faculty. You've made long lasting friendships. You're preparing for or returning to the workforce. You have thrived during a worldwide pandemic. And I use the word thrive because it is defined as growing vigorously. That is how I define the class of 2021, the students who have thrived. You are more eager to contribute, lift others up, show grace, and stay determined to cross that finish line. The pandemic will not define you. Your reaction to it is what will. Your decisions to make your health and safety and the health and safety of those around you were and remain a priority. Wearing a mask, practicing social distancing and getting a vaccine, learning to better navigate the tools for virtual learning, Zoom, Canvas, and obviously the best tool, your phone. Writing an actual letter to your grandparents, your aunt, or maybe your uncle who could not have visitors while they were in assisted living. Ordering groceries online, I do think that might be the greatest invention. I know I'm never going back to the grocery store. 
How have you reacted to the pandemic? What have you learned? How have you changed? How have you thrived? How have you grown? That is what will define you. Employers, employers will want to know this answer, and so will your children and your grandchildren. So let's return to today. You graduate. You celebrate. Today we also commence. The words are often perceived as interchangeable, but they are not. Graduation is an end. A graduate is a designation. Commencement is the beginning. Think about it. Commence means to start. Your degree provides you the momentum to continue your path to success. We at Northeast Community College are also moving forward to meet our mission. To meet our mission, I, I, I just about said in our post-pandemic world, because that's what I did say in May. But right now, we need to meet our mission in a world that has a lot of uncertainty um, as we look to our future. Just recently, the college unveiled its new strategic direction. We call it Envision. Although many of you may be leaving us, you are still impacted by our plans. Through Envision, Northeast will chart a course for all of us to better address the needs of the 20 county service area by empowering our citizens through the delivery of programs and services that will drive the success of our graduates, the workforce, and the vitality of our region. We have taken what Northeast is known for and will enhance opportunities through our strategic direction to create an inclusive and welcoming environment that provides multiple pathways and services to meet all students where they are and help them reach their educational goals. Again, we are so happy to have you and your families here in person with us today. The awards presented demonstrate your resolution to succeed and obtain a degree or credential in your chosen profession. Your investment in your education will return tremendous dividends as you use your skills, your knowledge, and your tenacity to succeed. The pandemic has created a class of graduates who are more eager to contribute. A ceremony like today may become a new tradition, celebrating our students who have chosen to be a part of the healthcare field. The helping profession, the helping profession a smaller group where we can take the time to make the event special and unique. For our PTA graduates, you will soon recite the professional pledge of ethical conduct for physical therapy assistance. For our paramedic program graduates, it's the code of ethics for EMS practitioners. By taking these pledges, you are vowing to uphold the highest ideals in your respective professions. These pledges are vitally significant as they reflect your commitment to not only yourselves, but to the very principles of service to others. You are earning more than a degree. You are accepting a responsibility to give care and compassion to your patients and treat them with respect and dignity to the best of your ability. And for that, we say thank you. We are pleased to be here with you as you begin this exciting journey. In this most challenging time, I do commend you all for becoming part of the solution as a member of the healthcare profession. Society in general should be deeply indebted to the service of the individuals who have and remain on the front lines of the pandemic. Thank you for joining these courageous individuals. I also want to thank our full-time and adjunct instructors, program directors, and support staff in Northeast PTA and paramedic EMT programs. They have taken their experiences in each of these professions and have passed their knowledge on to you. You've been in good hands while you've been with us. Use, their, use the wisdom they have imparted on you to guide you as you begin your careers. As you leave us, we are about to welcome students to campus as Northeast begins the fall semester on Monday, August 23rd. Operating under the pandemic has been challenging, but I am hopeful that you'll be able to get back into a routine as we begin this fall semester. Our entire college community has been diligent as we continue to prepare to meet the needs of the students, and doing this in a safe environment is critical in providing a learning and student-ready culture that advances Northeast's Envision strategic direction. I hope all of the experiences you've taken from Northeast will stay with you in the years to come. Please embrace change as you continue your life's journey. It's an exciting adventure that is truly all yours. On behalf of the Board of Governors and all of our faculty and staff, we wish each of you a very bright and successful future. 
You are the class of 2021. Please wear this designation with pride. Take what you've learned and show the world we can do better. Stay Northeast strong. Thank you. Students, student success would not be possible without our administration, especially during the recent pandemic. In the spring of 2020, the college was forced to move predominantly to remote learning. The paramedic program was allowed to remain in person and the PTA program was supplied with the technology and resources needed to pro provide online and virtual classes. At the end of the semester, PTA students and faculty returned to campus to, to deliver hands-on testing to ensure students were competent. Despite the ongoing pandemic recovery, faculty and staff were diligently trained in protocols that allowed us to provide in-person classes during the fall of 2020 and the spring of 2021. I think I can speak for the graduates when I tell you how grateful we are to be able to be back on campus. As I introduce the college administration with us today, please stand and be recognized. Dr. Barrett, President of Northeast Community College. Dr. Michelle Gill, Vice President of Educational Services. Dr. Jeff Hoffman, Dean of Health and Public Services Division. Join me in thanking them with a round of applause. At this time, we would like to recognize the PTA and paramedic programs faculty and staff. Please stand and remain standing as I read your name. Terry Carella, PTA Faculty and Academic Coordinator of Clinical Education. Andrea Sir, PTA Faculty and PTA Club Advisor. Don Doherty, Executive Assistant of the, of the Health and Public Services Division. Dr. Tom Serber, Paramedic Program Director. Dr. Lisa Yostin, Paramedic Program Associate Medical Director. Dr. Serber and Dr. Yostin were not able to be with us today. Mike Anderson, paramedic instructor. Brock Soderberg, paramedic instructor. Bob McElroy, paramedic instructor. Matt Montgomery, clinical and field coordinator. CJ Pruitt, paramedic instructor. And Brandy Fuchs, EMS, paramedic program administrative assistant. This group is committed to the success of each student. They each bring valuable experience from the field and use that experience to teach students the concepts and realities of their profession. Students learn what it means to work in the field with patients who are sick and injured and how patients trust them to save and restore their lives. Each of you are, ex are exceptional and we are fortunate to have you. Thank you for your contribution and commitment to these programs. These programs could not run without the support of their advisory committees and their clinical faculty. Please help me welcome to the podium Terry Carella and CJ Pruitt to recognize these important people. I'd like to take a moment to talk about the clinical education component of the PTA program. The program requires 16 weeks of clinical experience. These experiences take place in hospitals, outpatient clinics, nursing homes, and rehab facilities. Students are assigned a clinical instructor who oversees the student during the clinical rotation. Clinical instructors are PTs and PTAs who do not get paid as instructors. They volunteer their time with students from across the country because they believe in the future of physical therapy. Our program would not be in existence if it wasn't for these clinical instructors. If you glance at your recognition program, you will see a list of clinical instructors who volunteered their time for our students this past year. 
The clinical instructors denoted by an asterisk are graduates from our program. Graduates never forget the importance of your clinical experience and in a couple years I hope I get a phone call or email from you asking to be a clinical instructor for future students. What an awesome way to support your program in the future of physical therapy. I have the privilege of traveling across Nebraska and the surrounding states to visit students during their clinicals. I hear so many positive comments about our program. The students do an amazing job representing us as faculty, our program, and our college. We are well respected in this state. Many clinics and hospitals will only hire our graduates from our program. Another group I'd like to recognize is our advisory committee. These people help us to keep our curriculum current, advise us on policies and procedures, and help us with student issues. We have a strong membership on this committee who are passionate about our program and our student success. Finally, on a personal note, I'd like to wish you ladies, we had all women in our class this year, I'd like to wish you ladies the best of luck. You've chosen a career that is both humbling and gratifying. You've worked hard to get to this point. Never stop challenging yourself and never stop growing as a professional. Thank you for choosing Northeast Community College and this PTA program. I'm proud to call you guys colleagues. First off, I would like to say how excited we are for these students and how proud we are of these students for all of their commitment, hard work, and dedication to the paramedic program. The students in our paramedic programs have quite extensive hours to obtain in clinical field and finally internship experiences. Along with demanding coursework, they are also completing these hours throughout the program in clinical and field sites with amazing preceptors. 315 hours of clinical time is required for our programs. This is completed throughout our program at clinical sites throughout our region. We are very fortunate to have such knowledgeable preceptors in our clinical sites who help teach and mold our students into becoming amazing paramedics. Thank you for your dedication to the Northeast Community College paramedic programs. At this time, we would like to take a moment to read off and recognize our clinical sites. These sites are also listed in the program. CHI Health St. Francis, Columbus Community Hospital, Faith Regional Health Services, Fountain Point Medical Community, and 12 Clans Unity Hospital. Along with clinical hours, each student is required to achieve 180 hours of field time with one of our amazing field sites, where they work with set preceptors to achieve the experience and patient contacts that they need. These sites and preceptors truly guide our students and work with them side by side, leading them with knowledge and experience that is priceless. Our students would not be able to enter this career without each and every one of our preceptors and field sites taking them under their wings. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your time and efforts with each and every student you meet. Finally, at the end of their program, each student must complete their internship with a set preceptor or preceptors. The total internship is 192 hours of running calls and leading patient care. The students work the same shifts as their preceptors and really get to hone in on their skills in patient care. Each and every internship site and proctor is key to developing the students to not only prepare them for the beginning of their careers as a paramedic, but also to mentor them and guide them to help them finish their program strong and ready to succeed. We would like to say a heartfelt thank you for each and every preceptor that oversees a patient's internship. Without you, our students would not have the confidence and experience to thrive. At this time, we would like to take a moment to read off and recognize our field and internship sites. These sites are also listed in the program. Atkinson Fire and Rescue, City of Norfolk Fire Division, Columbus Fire Department, Norfolk Ambulance Services Incorporated, Santee Sioux Nation, South Sioux City Fire Department, and York Fire and Rescue. In conclusion, it has been our honor to have each and every one of you in this paramedic programs. We being able to watch you all grow in knowledge and confidence throughout your time with us has been amazing. In this career, graduation is truly just the beginning. Stay focused and always be willing to learn. There is always something to learn from everyone you meet. We look forward to seeing where each of you ends up in your paramedic career. Be proud of yourselves and celebrate this accomplishment. I know that we are all beyond proud of you.
pleasure today to introduce to you our guest speaker, Scott Crawford. Mr. Crawford has 31 years of service in emergency medical services from the roles of EMT, paramedic, flight medic, and educator. He, hold, he holds multiple EMS certifications and is an award-winning instructor. His teaching style is one of a kind, and he is well known as an educator who has taught for Methodist College, Omaha Fire, Southeast Community College, and Western Iowa Tech. He is an accomplished speaker and author on emergency medical service topics and has presented at several conferences and symposiums at both the local and national venues. Please join me in welcoming Scott Crawford. Central equipment. Good afternoon. Welcome everyone to Northeast Community College graduation ceremony for the paramedic program and physical therapy assistant program students. I'm honored to have been given the opportunity to celebrate with you the achievements of these students. Today is the culmination of their perseverance and dedication to their chosen craft. I know because I've been there, done that, and have two drawers full of t-shirts. Over the years, people and events have caused a lot of stuff to be deposited in my head. Considered collectively, I suppose you could divide these musings as byproducts of experience. Some of the thoughts passed unnoticed, some stuck, some evolved into new directions. All have played a role in defining who I was yesterday, who I am today, and who I will become tomorrow. I want to share a few thoughts with you today, collectively and individually, about your journey. I will keep my remarks brief, noting that any talk shorter than 10 minutes is a commercial, any talk longer than 20 minutes is a sermon. We will shoot for something in between. Do you remember the first time you showed up for a field insurance trip, or maybe the first few calls you went on? I do. The station house was one of the busiest in the city, located in an area noted for perforating people and lots of sick folks in general. I was stoked. My mind reeled with the possibilities that lay ahead. I stepped out of my vehicle and walked with a bit of trepidation toward the station house. This was it. This is what I loved and was that for which I had trained. Anticipation with a touch of nausea built in for good measure. Like a poster child for EMS, I strode with feigned confidence. My boots glistened in the sunlight. Squad pants tightly creased with more gadgets than Batman strung on my belt. A stethoscope draped around my neck completed the look. My preceptor and his partner met me, familiarized me with the squad in the house, got a cup of coffee, and waited for the tones to hit. And waited. And waited. I had figured that we would spike a half a dozen IV bags and hang them on the rail just to be ahead of the game. The captain's office was just off the bay floor with a tile hallway separating the two. After a couple of hours, I was pacing the hallway like a jaguar stalking a spider monkey. I passed the door once, then twice, and a few more times. Without looking up from his paperwork, my preceptor said, Scott, sit down, we're not going anywhere. Somewhat deflated, I sat down on the couch on the apparatus floor and took out some books to do some studying. In the 15 hours that I was there, we ended up making two calls, neither of them which was remotely serious. I was prepared to spend the whole shift riding the shotgun of the wings of angels, snatching life from the wretched talons belonging to the harbingers of death that would otherwise afflict the humanity we were sent there to defend. Eh? wasn't quite that dramatic, but you get the idea. One's quality of life is nothing more than the sum total of their expectations, met or unmet. The degree to which our expectations are met determine where we are in that continuum between happiness and fulfillment and crabby and unfulfilled. With that being said, let's look at, it as what, we, let's look at what it is we do and establish some realistic expectations. This is essential if we are to avoid the pitfalls that debase us as effective care providers. This is essential if the goal 
is to not just exist as practitioners, but thrive for the long haul. Keep in mind that well over half the patients we see fall into the subacute category. This means that they may have a medical need, but that need is non-emergent and could be handled in a setting other than the emergency room. The more patients you see, the truer this becomes. What we're talking about here are averages. There will always be the unpredictable ebb and flow of critical patients and conversely times when folks present present in somewhat less than compromised state. Either way, our patients have the expectation that we're there to solve their problem. We must share the same expectation regardless of acuity or circumstances. As we field emergency care providers and physical therapy assistants as well, we are the social workers of America's streets, folks. Years ago, I advanced this proposition of our role at least most of the time, a significant number of our patients present with a social sense, social issue, or physical manifestations of a short or long-term social issue. Folks use different methods to cope with stressors. Some examples include consumption of alcohol, drugs, overeating, smoking, or engaging in other high-risk activities as a diversion. Over time, these behaviors translate directly into acute or chronic health issues, including heart disease, lung disease, liver disease, diabetes, obesity, and a host of other issues that we see in our patients. Other patients may have genetic predisposition, acute infection, trauma, or just bad luck with no apparent precipitating factors. Putting aside the etiology and or acuity of the patient's complaint, the fact is the patient expects us to solve their problem with understanding and efficiency. If we as care providers share the same expectation, we remain content and subsequently effective care pra clinical practitioners. So what if your situation is not stacking up to what your expectations are? Not to worry, this is something that can happen right out of the gate or may develop around the last turn or into the stretch. Your options are threefold at this point. Either change your situation, reevaluate your expectations, or both. Whoops. The worst thing that can happen at this crucial time for you and your patient is to do nothing. It is said that about 80% of the folks that work in this country are not happy with their job. At best, these people spend a third of their lives miserable. For you, the stakes are a lot higher as it translates into less than optimal patient care and wear on you physically, mentally, and emotionally. It's been a couple decades since that first ride time. I'm still here, but there's nothing on my belt except a couple more inches of leather. I always carry a Sharpie, a pen, and a pen light in the right pocket of my squad pants, and that's about it. I found that you can fit a sandwich container in the cargo pockets and a roll of sweet tarts in the flashlight pocket. My boots are still shining, though. And I still carry a stethoscope because I'm kind of funny about earwax. Years later, I know my place, I've set my pace, and most important, I'm still in the race. Your patients will expect nothing less. We're about a half dozen miles out from the hospital, and everything had been pretty much done. I was scribbling a few notes on the patient care report cheat sheet. The elderly woman in my care had some cardiac and respiratory issues, leaving her a bit short of breath, again. The art of medicine intersects the art of conversation, or at least it should and this meeting was no different. She and I did our best to talk her out of, if not away from, the circumstances that brought us together. When all physical parameters are looking good, sometimes lingering on the aches and pains is like putting a second coat of paint on a wall when one would have covered it. Sometimes you have to reach for some small talk. I complimented her on the robe that she was wearing. It was a white robe with purple flowers, and she said she loved the color purple and, in fact, had a favorite purple dress. The following night, I was at a high school football game with the family. Our two older boys were playing, and they were all enjoying the game. My wife and I were talking when a woman that lives by us came up to us and asked if we had been on the rescue call yesterday. We acknowledged that we had, and she inquired further if either one of us had gone on that call. I told her that I was there. She smiled and took my hand in hers as she explained that the woman we transported was her mother. Her mother had died during the night at the hospital. She said that her mother commented on the kind care that she received from a man on the ambulance and that she had enjoyed the conversation 
surrounding the color purple and her favorite purple dress in particular. Tears filled her eyes. She smiled, thanked us for who we are and the difference we make, gently squeezed my hand and walked away. For her mom, all the well-placed interventions that evening dissipated in the flowing fabric of a favorite purple dress. Not all people come, become our patients, but all patients are people. While protocol and practicality define patient management, attentiveness to people defines patient care. First and ten, how cool is that? In 1912, candy manufacturer Clarence Crane Garrettsville of Ohio invented Lifesavers. As a summer candy that could withstand heat better than chocolate, after registering the trademark, Crane sold the rights to the peppermint candy to Edward John Noble for 2,900 bucks. Instead of using cardboard rolls, which were not very successful, Noble created tinfoil wrappers to keep his mints fresh. Peppo Mint was the first Lifesavers flavor. A five-flavor roll of Lifesavers first appeared in 1935. That information in five bucks might get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> I have a kind of sweet tooth, and these, uh, these puppies uh, definitely were in my top ten, especially the original five-flavor roll. Colorful, tasty, utilitarian, and mood adjustable. Sometimes I would chomp down pulverizing the ring into dozens of yummy sugar shards. Other times, and most frequently, I would suck on them until they became a razor-thin band that you could wrap around the end of your tongue like a napkin ring. Much safer than those spears you used to make out of peppermint sticks. If you were lucky enough to get the two together, a personal game of ring toss was always entertaining. Heck, one time I thought they would make awesome racing slicks for matchbox cars. They didn't fit the rims, but I kept breaking, but I gave it a shot. Some years ago, Lifesavers people used to have a commercial depicting someone all bummed out or having a bad or crappy day. Behold, dad, a friend, or someone would show up and offer, have a Lifesaver. Immediately, all was right with the universe. No longer did missing the winning shot or being blown off by the heartthrob down the block matter. Like the lifesaver, the angst became smaller, melted away, and was ultimately gone. Powerful stuff, the lifesavers. Kind of reminds me of we do, what we do most of the time, isn't it? Have you ever noticed that lifesaver is only embossed on one side of the candy? The other side is free of identifiers of any short sort. True anonymity, plain label. Just for giggles, let's say that these edible washers represent us, the care providers. Now, if you flip this in the air a couple thousand times, probability says that 50% of the time we would be lifesavers, and the rest of the time, not so much. Problem is, most folks we take care of need lifesavers significantly less than 50% of the time. The rest of the time, they don't want or need lifesavers. They need someone to help solve their problem. That someone is us, with no labels attached. We need to throw lifesavers to the folks overboard, not the ones still on deck. Like all things we do, the role of lifesavers should be titrated to need and effect. Recently, while staring at the myriad of choices taunting me in the candy aisle at the local mini mart, my eye caught a new twist on an old and familiar theme. Lifesavers gummies. Awesome! Especially since the teeth and gums aren't what they used to be. Not to worry. I can still crack a ring with the best of them. I'm just more cautious these days. Given my affinity for other gummy critters, I had to have them. When I got in the car, I tore the bright yellow box open like a starving man in the desert. Eureka, a whole new world of possibilities. O-rings for oxygen bottles. Put it around the pin on the squad and it won't roll around. Lick it first, no one will swipe your pen. Yay! Lifesavers gummies. Flexible facsimiles of the rigid predecessors, yet unchanged in every other respect. Here's a challenge for you. Bite into one of those hard lifesavers and see if you can only break it in one place. Impossible. It's rare for the pelvic ring to fracture in only one place, too, and the same is true of lifesavers with similar characteristics. Conversely, the lifesavers gummies respond with a high degree of resiliency and don't go to pieces given the same stressors. 
Wouldn't it be great to have all of our original lifesaver characteristics with added flexibility, not cracking in the face of challenging situations and stress in general? Are we lifesavers? Sometimes. Sometimes not. Either way, I sense the role of lifesavers just got better. In conclusion, and we need a conclusion because action without purpose is a seizure. <laughs> Most common denominator is people. It is how you treat people, not how you treat disease, that will define you as a medical professional by your patients and your peers. Medicine is an art practice as a science in the context of a myriad of rules and constants. The art of medicine is taking care of people. The science is in the practice and contemplation of the craft. This paradigm will bring you to the patient with a committed heart and an open mind. On behalf of the administration and faculty of Northeast Community College, I congratulate you on this inaugural step into a larger world. May your journey be fulfilling and filled full of compassion, caring, and hope for humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Tara Millard was elected PTA class president in the fall of 2020. She has been a great leader and role model for her peers. She has remained positive during a time of uncertainty and always been there to support her classmates. Please help me welcome Tara to the podium to give her student address. start off by thanking you all for being here today and every day. As students, we know our programs aren't easy. Not only did we lean on each other to make it through the curriculum, but we le leaned on you as well through the tough times for the moral and emotional support. Without it, we wouldn't be standing here in front of you today graduating as paramedics and physical therapist assistants. Thank you to our instructors for the patience to teach us, support us, and guide us to success during our time at Northeast. Paramedic students, I wish you well in your future endeavors. Continue to lean on your peers and colleagues to help you grow as you save many lives over the years to come. To my PTA classmates, I wish you all well in your careers. Go out and treat your patients with the highest standards of care that I know you all are capable of. We have spent more time with each other in the last year and a half than we have with our own families. And we've become a family of 10, our own. There were many laughs and just as many tears, but I wouldn't have wanted to complete this challenge with anyone else. Be proud of all your accomplishments. I know I am. Pele, a Brazilian former professional footballer, once said, Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to recognize the students who are graduating with honors. Honors are calculated on the student's cumulative grade point average as the end of the spring 2021 semester. Students wearing gold cords, please rise. This student is graduating with highest honors, which is a grade point average of a perfect 4.0. Students wearing white cords, please rise. These students are graduating with honors, which is a grade point average of between a 3.75 and a 3.99. Students who are wearing gold stools, please rise. 
These students are members of Phi Theta Kappa, an international honor society for two-year college students. These students were invited to join Phi Theta Kappa after achieving a 3.5 or higher grade point average in 12 credit hours of classes. They chose to join and are now members of a group that emphasizes scholarship, leadership, service, and fellowship. Would the graduates, faculty, administrators, staff, and members of the Board of Governors who are wearing military recognition cords please stand? They are woven red, white, and blue cord is a gift from Northeast Community College in recognition of the individual's commitment and service to the United States of America. Let us recognize these individuals for their service. The Northeast PTA program has a very active student club. The Physical Therapist Assistant Club is an organization for students enrolled in the program and is dedicated to fostering professional development before they enter the workforce. The class of 2021 participated in a service learning project where they raised money for the Marvin Hall Scholarship Fund. Marvin was the founding PTA program director of our program. After he left Northeast, he continued to serve the program as clinical coordinator for years. The class raised $1,300 by donating items and selling tickets for each basket raffle. This year, current students and recent graduates have opportunity to become certified through an online course in a contemporary treatment called blood flow restri restriction therapy. The club officers made a great team and pro proved to be able to think outside of the box when we were unable to do any of the same activities we have in the past. Your creativity and dedication are what makes your class so memorable. Would the following please rise and be recognized? Tara Millard, President. Caitlin Berman, Secretary. Alicia Bikey, Treasurer. Cambry Cottam, Historian. Northeast PTA tutors have a paid position through the Advising and Academic Support Center. Each student completes tutor training and has a minimum number of hours they must be available to assist their peers. They have extreme pressure to get information down fast so that they can serve their classmates. On behalf of all faculty and your class, thank you for your outstanding leadership and commitment to the success of others. Would the following please rise and be recognized. Hannah Kosick and Kira Brevitz. The PTA class of 2021 will now receive their diplomas. In addition, they will receive a pin as a gift from the program and the PTA club. Through collaboration with Northeast's marketing department, the program faculty and staff have designed a pin to represent the accomplishment of a personal goal, as well as our gratitude for choosing Northeast Community College as a foundation for your career. The pin represents the knowledge, the personal growth, and the friendships you have gained through your time in the program. As faculty, we appreciate your hard work and dedication over the past two years. The resiliency you've shown through all the challenging times assures us that you will be valuable healthcare providers. Family members, you are welcome to come forward as you wish to take pictures of your graduates as they cross the stage. They will also recite their pre professional um, oath over here if you wanna take pictures as well when they're all up on the risers. We ask that as you do this, you come down the center aisle and then you return back to your seats down the left aisle on this side. Will the PTA graduates please rise while Dr. Gill comes forward to present the candidates. President Barrett, I present to you the candidates for the Associate of Applied Science degrees in PTA. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, and subject to completion of all college requirements, 
The following candidates are presented to you to confer upon them the Associate of Applied Science degree. At this time, graduates, if you'd walk towards the stage, since you're already standing, <laughs> and proceed across the stage as you get your pen and your diploma, as your name is announced by Dr. Hoffman. Alicia Bikey. Kiera Brubitz. Caitlin Berman. Cambry Cottom. Paige Detour. Classic. Kennedy Shuttler. <laughs> Caitlin Suits. Vitosh. At this time, sorry, at this time I ask that everyone follow along in the program as the class recites the professional pledge of ethical conduct for the physical therapist assistant. I 
students through their lifelong acquisition and the refinement of the knowledge, skills, and abilities. I will support organizational behaviors and business practices that benefit patients, clients, and society. I will participate in efforts to meet the health needs of people locally, nationally, and globally. I pledge to abide by these standards throughout my professional career in physical therapy practice. Wow, that was way better than rehearsal, ladies. Good job. <laughs> Paramedic class of 2021 will now receive their diplomas. In addition, they will receive a pin as a gift from the paramedic program. Paramedic graduates, you have learned this is a very serious job with an immense amount of responsibility. You will be thrust into the lives of at other people's worst moments and sometimes very private moments. You will be called to bring hope and comfort. As a paramedic, you will need to take control of situations with a level head a firm voice, and gentle hands. The pin you are receiving represents the accomplishment of your goal to be trained as a competent paramedic here at Northeast Community College. It also represents the fact that you are now a member of the EMS family with whom you share a common bond. This is a family who will laugh and cry with you. They will support you after a tough call or during a life crisis. They will help you to be better, to be stronger, and to help you stand between life and death when you are called to do so. As a member of the EMS family and a graduate of Northeast Community College, we hope you wear this pin with Northeast pride. Family members, again, you are welcome to come forward as you wish to take pictures of the graduates, and we ask you to use the center aisle to approach the stage and return to your seat using the left side aisle. Will the paramedic graduates please rise while Dr. Gill comes forward to present the candidates. President Barrett, I present to you the candidates for Diploma and Associate of Applied Science degrees. Upon recommendation of the faculty and subject to the completion of all college requirements, the following candidates are presented to you to confer upon them the Diploma or Associate of Applied Science degree in paramedicine. Graduates, you're already ready, so if you'll just approach the podium, um, walk across and receive your pin and diploma as your name is announced by Dr. Hoffman. The following students have earned the diploma in paramedic, Rohahis Aldrich. <laughs> Jose Adalo Rojos. Nyla Doxy. <laughs> Skylar Hellerich. Max Hessman. <laughs> Timothy Moser.
Alexander Webb. The following students have earned their Associate of Applied Science in Paramedic. William Dilulo. <laughs> Chris Kneifel. Nathan Louie. Natalia Munn. <laughs> Trina Osuna. Jonathan Teague. The remaining students earned both their diploma and associate of applied science in paramedic. Teresa Martinez. Sarah Perrigan. <laughs> Isaiah Swan. Devin Wonky. At this time, I ask everyone to follow along in the program as the class recites the professional pledge of ethical conduct for an EMS practitioner.
So PTA and paramedic graduates, please stand as Dr. Barrett c comes forward to confirm your degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors in the state of Nebraska, I confer on you the appropriate degrees, Diploma and Associate of Applied Science. Graduates, it's now the time. Please move your tassels on your cap to the left side. Now I'm going to have you turn around and look at your families and your friends. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the Northeast Community College PTA and Paramedic graduating classes of 2021. As a student, you've been part of a community here at Northeast, and you will continue to be a part of our community as an alum. So let me be the first to welcome you to the Northeast Community College Alumni Association. Your membership in this association introduces you into a college community united in its diversity of graduates, as well as, as its commitment to the future of Northeast. You may be seated, graduates. On behalf of Northeast Community College, we wish to thank all of you for attending today and for those watching via live stream, for viewing our commencement ceremony and helping us to honor our graduates here today. A very special thank you to those of you who work to make this in-person ceremony a special one for our students and families. Graduates, you are about to embark on an exciting journey. You've learned well and are commended for your accomplishments. Go forth with confidence that you are well prepared for the future. Stay strong. Stay Northeast strong. Thank you. We ask, I did it again. We ask the audience to remain seated or you can all stand as the graduates go out, but just remain in the room until the um, platform party and the graduates have exited. At which time, please join us for a reception honoring our graduates in the atrium of this building. Thank you again for attending the PTA and paramedic recognition and con degree conferral ceremony and for making this a memorable day for our graduates.